Hello, Reggie. I am honored to be in your presence. Uh, pardon me for asking this question, as I know it appears in your nightmares, but do you think that the West will ever be able to receive Mother 3? <laughs> On February 9th, 2022, Nintendo announced that Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings would finally be available to play on the Nintendo Switch. This was a momentous occasion for fans of Earthbound, fans of gaming, and the planet Earth as a whole. You might think I'm exaggerating when I say planet Earth, but people were really anxious to get their hands on these games again, or at least to see Nintendo acknowledge them. It has been almost a decade since Earthbound showed up on the Wii U, and even that had been after the series saw no releases of any any kind outside of Japan for 18 years. Even Jelly Boy got put on the NSO before these games. Because that's the thing with Mother. You can never really tell if it's dead or not. With this series, celebration also breeds speculation, and it's never too long after Nintendo so much as glances at Earthbound that people start asking the typical questions. Could this mean a remaster of the games was coming? Could Mother 3 finally see a release in the West? Would Earthbound be remade? What about Mother 4? Will Game Explain keep putting Lucas in their prediction video thumbnails? Why does anyone care about Earthbound? Why did Nintendo take so long to make these games available in the first place? So whether you're a series veteran or a newcomer who's interested in taking the games for a spin, I thought I'd venture to answer some of these questions, mostly because I realized that the Mother series has been in my life for, well, most of it. I've been in love with these games since I was an 11-year-old emulating Earthbound on my parents' gateway computer, when I'd hide my emulator and ROMs in a folder called Pix because I was afraid of getting in trouble from my parents or getting arrested by my internet service provider. And while it would only be one year until Charter finally put their foot down when I accidentally seeded Season 3 of The Office to nearly all of the Midwest because I had no idea how torrents work, it has been 15 years since these special little games first came into my life. So I want to talk about Earthbound. Earthbound Beginnings and Mother 3. Specifically, I want to talk about why this re-release was so cool. Why Nintendo waited so long to release these games in the first place. What the future of the series looks like. That is, should you hold your breath for Mother 3? What could Mother 4 look like? And will Earthbound be remade? I don't know, maybe some other stuff too. Who cares? I don't remember asking you what this video could be about, you stupid idiot. Oh, and also, if you clicked on this video just to know whether or not I think Mother 3 is going to be localized, you can skip to this timestamp below. I don't blame you, okay? Reggie's been holding out on this shit for years. Number one, why this re-release is awesome. I have to admit, the moment I realized what was happening, like the moment I realized Earthbound was finally being added to the Nintendo Switch's online service, I actually wasn't that excited. I figured both Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings had been added to the Wii U's virtual console like, what? three or four years ago? Most Nintendo fans who wanted to play them probably already had, so this wasn't a huge deal, right? It was kind of like a formality. But then I realized that I am a dumb human, and time exists as a concept, and Earthbound actually was added to the Wii U's library in 2013, nearly a decade ago. In addition to that, I remember that Earthbound Beginnings came out in 2015, seven years ago. These numbers might not mean much to you, but they kind of blew my tiny, dumb little mind. I guess you could say they made me feel old. They made me realize that time is passing through my fingertips like sand through my fingertips. Okay, look, I'm not made of analogies. I'm a human. I'm made of muscles, bones, and memories. Memories like drinking coffee with a group of Mr. Saturns and being convinced that I was on acid. From the moment I played Earthbound, I fell in love with it. And even though I had already experienced the game, I, like many Mother fans in those days, began to clamor for an official release from Nintendo. I even made it my signature on my GameFAQ account, which is how you know I was serious. Little did I know it wouldn't be until seven years later that my wish, and the wish of many any mother fans finally came true. 2006 and 2013 were seven years apart, but they felt like an eternity to a young gamer boy who just wanted an option to play Earthbound legally. I realize now that even though those seven hopeless years passed slowly, more time has passed between 2022 and 2013. I'm nearly 10 years older. I can barely believe it. I kind of feel like Shigesato Itoi, the series creator reflecting on the fact that he's old enough to make friends with people young enough to be his grandchildren. And that's when I realized that an entirely new generation of video game fans might be playing Earthbound for the very first time. And not just a new generation of fans, but a new generation of fans on a Nintendo console that actually sold well. Yeah, the Wii U release of Earthbound was amazing, don't get me wrong.
long, and people in like fucking Australia finally got to play it or whatever. But the console only sold 13.56 million units worldwide, and about 6.5 million in the United States. Now, let's be honest here. Of the 6.5 million Wii U owners in the United States, how many do you think actually bought and played Earthbound? What about Earthbound Beginnings, its lesser known NES prequel? How many of them were even old enough to be allowed to shop on the virtual console? Well, Nintendo never released the official numbers, and even though Earthbound was consistently a top seller for the Wii U, I can't imagine that even half of the Wii U owners actually bought the game. And honestly, it's hard for me to imagine that half of half of Wii U owners actually bought this game. Though, maybe I'm being a little harsh. I guess you could argue that Wii U owners were more likely to be dedicated Nintendo fans, since that console never actually gained mainstream appeal. So, maybe a bunch of weirdos did actually own Earthbound. I don't know. I'm not here to debate Wii U politics, okay? I'm just setting up my stupid point. What I'm getting at is that the Nintendo Switch just recently passed the Nintendo Wii in total units sold to become the fourth best-selling console of all time, with over 101 million units sold worldwide. That's nearly 10 times the the amount of Wii U consoles, which means 10 times the gamers have the potential to experience Earthbound. Of course, I say potential because you need the Nintendo Switch Online to actually play it, and the last count of NSO members that I could find online was about 32 million. How many of those members will actually play the game? I can't say, but as a longtime fan of the series, I just think it's something that makes this release significant. Earthbound is finally on Nintendo's best-selling home console, and that makes me happy. Even if only half of those 32 million people check out Earthbound for a couple minutes, that's still a greater number than the total amount of Wii U units sold, like, ever. Wii U units is such a stupid thing to have to say. And apparently the Switch is only like halfway through its lifetime, so... Who knows, maybe it's gonna sell 150 or 200 million overall. Each of those sales is another chance for someone to play Earthbound. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Aren't I forgetting that Earthbound showed up on both the new Nintendo 3DS and the SNES Classic? Doesn't that mean this release isn't all that special? Well, for one, these releases weren't exactly recent. You might call me a hater, but I don't like acknowledging the SNES Classic as anything more than a Nintendo collectible with forced scarcity. I'm happy that Nintendo put Earthbound on it, and quite frankly, I'm surprised that Nintendo put Earthbound on it, but I tried to buy one of these things like three times before I finally just gave up. And even when I did play one, the controller cords were so short that I had to sit uncomfortably close to the TV. It's definitely cute, okay? I'll give it that. I'll give Nintendo a point for putting Star Fox 2 and Earthbound and Secret of Mana on here, but I'm not going to pretend like this product did anything special for any of these games, at least not in terms of helping them reach new audiences, because that's what excites me about the Switch release, the potential for a huge amount of new people playing this game for the first time or being able to share it with their friends. In the case of the new Nintendo 3DS, I actually have nothing negative to say. I think this release is awesome, and I admit that I had completely forgotten about it. I've only met like two humans in real life who actually own this system, but both of them had Earthbound on their console. The new Nintendo 3DS was not the second, not the third, but the fourth iteration of the system, but it still sold pretty well, and I think Earthbound was a popular game on the console. It actually sold more than the Wii U, which is just kind of sad. However, these sales numbers and this availability doesn't doesn't make the Switch release of Earthbound less relevant. For my money, it makes it more relevant because of one major fact. Back in 2020, Yasuhiro Nagata, the director of the Hobonichi Mother Project, and someone who has basically become a toy's protege, tweeted out that Mother 1 and Mother 2 were available to play on mini consoles and some virtual consoles, and that this, quote, wouldn't be changing anytime soon. I'll expand more upon this information in the next section, but for a long time, fans of Mother weren't hopeful about the game showing up on the Switch at all, or at least in them showing up in an expedient manner. And I'm not going to take any wild guesses, but the announcement of the closure of the 3DS and Wii U systems, shortly after the announcement of Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings, feels a little fishy to me. Nintendo knew it was only a matter of time before the axe came down on the new Nintendo 3DS's virtual console, and they also knew that if they announced the closure of that virtual console before the release of Earthbound, that people would be pissed. I mean, another reason this whole thing is significant at all is because Nintendo has an added new games to the NES and SNES Online for like months. And by the looks of what they were actually releasing, it seemed like they were scraping the bottom of the barrel while Earthbound just sat there like, hey, you don't need to scrape the bottom of the barrel. I'm here, outside of the barrel. Hello, my name is Ne- <laughs> 
no offense to Immortal, Eliminator Boat Duel, Jelly Boy, Baseball Simulator 1000, Kung Fu Heroes, Vice Project Doom, or the Ignition Factor, but after a while, it began to feel like some ridiculous joke that games like this were being added before EarthBound. Star Fox 2 never even came out back in the day, and even that ended up on the NSO before EarthBound. This isn't me complaining or saying that Jelly Boy doesn't deserve to be on the NSO. I think you can argue that games like Jelly Boy are what makes the NSO valuable, and that it offers you certified bangers like Super Mario World, while also letting you experience a game you've probably literally never heard of in your life. I have another point about the NSO later, but that's in the next section okay so just be patient you stupid ass the reason i point this out again is to talk about significance think of it in terms of smash bros the greatest nintendo commercial ever created mario luigi captain falcon fox yoshi samus every character of the original 12 had appeared in some form or another in some game or another from their franchise on either the nintendo switch online or some other kind of release except one boy the boy nintendo hated am i saying earthbound should have been on the nso from day one? Absolutely not. But am I saying it feels damn good to have it on there? Absolutely. I mean, the series creator literally jumps for joy twice in the video he filmed to commemorate the re-release. Shigesato Itoi is a 73-year-old former smoker, and Earthbound's re-release got him to do this. That's beautiful. You'll notice in this video that Itoi says sometimes he meets people who want to play the mother games but can't. I talked a lot about how Earthbound went 18 years without a re-release in North America, but I didn't even really touch on the fact that it was never released in the UK. No matter how you slice it, the Mother series just hasn't always been, you know, available. So here we are, Earthbound is back. Nintendo even made a little commercial for it that uses Super Smash Bros. as a jumping off point, which is honestly something I think they should do for their older, more decrepit series more often. I hope that some young gamers see this commercial and decide to give the game a try. I think all of this is awesome, and I hope you think it's awesome too. Okay, but why the fuck did Nintendo wait so long? Number two, why did Nintendo keep Earthbound from the masses? Before I outline the main reasons why Nintendo took their time with this one, I think it's also important to understand the at times difficult journey Mr. Itoi took with these games. For everyone who already knows this history, I promise this will be quick, and I'm really only going to hit a handful of highlights so that everyone is on the same page. I'm not doing this to focus on the negatives or to paint Mother as some sort of sob story. I'm focusing on some of these sore spots because I I think it's important to remember some of the difficulties each game experienced, both in development and in release. It's also important to understand Mystery Toy's time in the game industry. I've always found it telling, for example, that at times during the second development of Mother 3, Mystery Toy seemed open to the idea of a Mother 4 but by the time development ended, he was certain he would never make it. Anyway, if you want a more in-depth history of the series, I suggest going to motherforever.net and just reading everything until you can't tell your fobbies from your Mr. Saturns. So let's start not with the localization or the Western world, but with the series history in Japan. Mother, the original game, was a huge hit, but the development did experience quite a few difficulties, and Itoi didn't exactly nail the pitch on his first try. He actually went home crying on a train after Miyamoto didn't seem too enthusiastic enthusiastic about the whole idea. Even after the game got the green light, it took a while to assemble the initial team for one, and Mystery Toy could tell, at least initially, that he needed to overcome the insecurities his team had about him, seeing as he was a well-known celebrity but a novice game developer, and some rumors implied that Mother was just a vanity project for him. However, things really got spicy with Mother 2, known as Earthbound in the rest of the world. I won't go through the whole shebang, but this entire game was saved by Satoru Iwata, who basically reworked the programming from scratch since the team had cornered themselves into a dead end. Without Iwata's help, it's likely the game would have taken another couple years to come out, or may not have come out at all. Mother 3 was infamously cancelled during its initial development for the Nintendo 64, where it would then spend years in development purgatory before finally restarting development under an entirely new team, working with entirely new technology, turning a game whose story had largely been developed around and for three dimensions into a two-dimensional Game Boy Advance game. I mean, it's understandable why much of this game's development on the GBA went under the radar the second time around, especially when you look at how hyped and publicized Mother 3 had been in the 90s. I think the development of Mother 3 had become a sore spot for Itoi, a sadness both for his team and for his fans. If you don't believe me, read the heartbreaking statement he wrote when he announced the game's initial cancellation. It's just sad, man. Outside of Japan, things never looked much better. Mother actually had been localized and basically ready to go on the NES. 
It was going to be called Earthbound. However, this ended up not happening. And while there's some debate and speculation around this point, many hypothesize that the localization was killed due to the approach of the SNES. Even though the game was totally finished, it got canned. This version is what you'll play on the NSO and the Wii U. And this version is also what many fans call Earthbound Zero. Even to this day, I can't really get myself to say the clumsy Earthbound beginnings. It'll always be Zero to me. Mother 2, or Earthbound, famously and notoriously flopped in the United States. And people like to point fingers at all kinds of different things. And no, it wasn't the marketing. Or at least I don't think so. This marketing is like pitch perfect for any American kid in 1995. I think what went wrong here is the game was more expensive than most other SNES games, which were already relatively expensive for the average American family. And look, in the 90s video games were a huge branding war, okay? So like, if you're a mom buying a video game for your kid in 1995, or if you're a kid who saved up their lawn mowing money all summer, what are you gonna buy? Donkey Kong Country for like 60 bucks, which has a commercial you saw on TV, or Earthbound, which is $20 more expensive and also you have no idea what it is. But I also think some other stuff was at play here. The RPG craze that would launch with Final Fantasy VII just hadn't started yet, and graphically speaking, Earthbound brought a knife to a gunfight. While we can look back now and appreciate the colorful, simplistic charm of Earthbound, a lot of gamer girls wanted more bombastic shit back then. They wanted 3D Donkey Kongs, okay? They wanted to see that monkey model spin, or at least they wanted to see the type of shading work going on in games like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI. And then, of course, there's Mother 3. I'm not even gonna get into this. The conversation about Mother 3 and localization is just too much for my haphazardly hyperfixating mind to even consider, because if I start writing about this, before I know it, I'm gonna have 45 pages of crazed ramblings about Reggie and his army of Goombas, and we just can't have that, okay? I'm too old for this shit. I can't talk about Mother 3 anymore. I'm sorry. At least not until section 3. Okay, long story short, despite consistent vocal clamorings from Western consumers, Mother 3 has never been officially sold by Nintendo outside of Japan. There you go. That's the story. But looking at this brief history doesn't exactly answer the question of why Nintendo waited so long to put Earthbound on the Nintendo Switch. I mean, the Wii U release seemed to be a big moment. The time where Nintendo finally stopped ignoring the Mother series. Satoru Iwata had always been a supporter of the series, and Itoi seemed enthusiastic about re-release and Miyamoto himself was enthusiastic about Itoi going back and finishing Mother 3 in the early 2000s, so what the hell? Why did this take so long? Well, I have a few different ideas about this. For the first one, I'm gonna toss it over to Echoes. Echoes is basically a Mother historian. Anything about the Mother series, specifically the development of Mother 3, Echoes probably knows more about it than me, so I want to read the answer that I got from Echoes first when I asked them about this particular topic. Okay, so one thing you need to understand is that Nintendo and Itoi both own Mother. It's like a 50-50 split. But for the most part, Nintendo treats it like Itoi's child, okay? It's because they have a lot of respect for him, and they used to work together a lot, especially in the 90s. Itoi helped pitch commercials for Nintendo, and even named things like the Virtual Boy. But when it comes to Mother, they usually wait for Itoi to make the first move. At least in the modern era when Satoru Iwata isn't there to get the ball rolling anymore. Anyway, I don't want to paraphrase and fuck up Echo's answer to this question, so I'm going to tell you what they said first. Yeah, so Yasuhiro Nagata tweeted about Mother 1 and Mother 2 on Wii U slash 3DS slash mini consoles back in 2020 after the Hobonichi project started. Back then, he said these were the only ways to play them, and it wouldn't change anytime soon. So it seems there was some unknown internal dispute or something. It's hard to say for sure exactly why he said that. My guess is, at least from what I've seen over the years, is that really since Mother has always been left to Itoi, they were waiting for his word on it. A lot of legacy virtual console releases happen this way. The original developer has to request for Nintendo to put it on there, versus them reaching out themselves. I know Iwata was the one who reached out about releasing it on the Wii U, and without that personal connection from within Nintendo, communication between the two is probably a lot harder. I think we've only seen it now due to the success of the Hobonichi project. For those out of the loop on this, the Hobonichi Mother project has been going on for about two years now, and it's a huge merchandising push from a toys company, making all sorts of Mother products with some pretty unique stuff in there. So from us on the outside, it can feel like, Hey, why isn't Nintendo releasing this game? Whereas what's probably going on on the inside is like, when is Itoi ready to contact Nintendo to get the ball rolling? 
And without that personal connection anymore in Satoru Iwata, this stuff probably takes a lot longer. I don't want to extrapolate too much from the friendship of Satoru Iwata and Shigesato Itoi. And I know Echoes wouldn't want me running my mouth either. I don't want to sit here and say, Earthbound doesn't come out because of Iwata's passing. I don't think it's respectful or fair to boil their relationship down to something personified by a business decision. These guys had an amazing friendship, and they both inspired each other in many ways. One of my favorite stories about them is when one visited the other for what was supposed to be a brief afternoon pop-by, and it became an hours-long conversation between two friends that lasted into the evening. Mr. Itoi was deeply affected by the passing of a great friend and influence in his life, and Mr. Iwata was constantly inspired by the nuanced, playful mind of this creative jack-of-all-trades. So that's why I don't want you to think of this as, Earthbound doesn't come out because Satoru Iwata passed away, but rather as, because Satoru Iwata passed away, Shigesato Itoi's relationship with Nintendo does not involve the personal element it once did. This isn't the 90s anymore, where Itoi, Iwata, and Miyamoto all sit around and shoot the shit and talk about gaming. This is 2022, and while Miyamoto is off making Mario movies with Chris Pratt, Itoi is chilling at home having not worked in the gaming business for 15 years. I know we all love Mother, but I wouldn't be surprised if the re-release scenarios don't happen sometimes, because it literally just takes a while for both Nintendo and Itoi to get around to it. To Itoi, Nintendo is once again just a big company that he's largely on the outside of. I think the Mother series, realistically, is just not a high priority for Nintendo, like, at all. See, if you're a Mother fan, or someone who wants to become a Mother fan if given the opportunity to play the games, it can feel like a personal attack when Nintendo, month after month, time after time, neglects Earthbound. But I don't think it's personal. See, like I said in the previous point, Nintendo doesn't even fully own the Mother series. It's a split between Itoi and his company. Mystery Toy does not work for Nintendo. He's a busy guy, and Nintendo is also full of busy businessmen and employees. But there's not like an Earthbound department. When it comes to setting up the NSO, Nintendo can just hit the big red release button for games like A Link to the Past or Super Mario World. But with Earthbound, it's probably way different. Even when Itoi says, let's do this thing, it probably requires at least a bit of coordination between Itoi and Nintendo. With Itoi releasing Mother products and Nintendo releasing other games, including a fuck ton of RPGs, you can't just put out Earthbound on like a Wednesday, okay? Okay, I see that's what they did, but like, just, just try to hear me out here. I'm not saying that this coordination should last 19 months. I'm not saying that this coordination should place games like this before Earthbound. But you need to remember that in the same way you go to work every day, so do people at Nintendo. And I promise you that no one's daily, weekly, or monthly tasks have much at all to do with Mother. And you know, Itoy's a cool guy. He probably wants to wait a little while to email people back. He's got other things to do cool guy stuff. But my point here is that Nintendo has a lot of games to release, and release dates and release strategies aren't things people just decide on a whim, even once every party is in agreement. So if you felt like that Earthbound trailer was weirdly copy and pasted into the Nintendo Direct, you're probably right. And it probably was. I bet they've been sitting on that trailer, or at least a trailer concept, for a pretty long time. But they also understand that Earthbound is the type of re-release that's gonna cause a lot of buzz. You know, like buzz buzz who fucking dies. And you've got to be careful about this stuff, because you don't want a game that's 30 years old and probably not going to make any money to step on the toes of a game like this. Earthbound Beginnings was announced for the Wii U when it was well into the crevices of its own deathbed. There was nothing Earthbound Beginnings could have possibly interfered with, and I'm sure it was just a quick little cash grab seeing as all the work for the ROM was already done. Nintendo doesn't hate Mother. It just doesn't fully own it, and it doesn't really have any need to prioritize it in the event that it could interfere with anybody else's plans. I don't always think it's fair to assume that Nintendo has some sort of negative or neglectful stance toward Earthbound. Over the past few years, Nintendo has released and licensed a lot of different RPGs. Some of these have been original games, some of them have been completely surprising remakes, and others equally surprising localizations. I mean really, there were a few Nintendo Directs for a little while there with like all these RPGs I had literally never heard of, and I also heard nothing about ever again. Sometimes I don't know if I like dreamed them up or like got drunk and made them myself all in one night in like some sort of hypnotic state and then convinced myself they were in the videos. I don't know. All I'm saying is that Earthbound is not only a low priority on Nintendo's list, but also a single RPG in a sea of other RPGs, which are actually new products that cost money. And no, I'm not exactly saying that Earthbound is going to step on the toes of Persona 5 
In some ways, I think it's the opposite. You know, a man named Reggie once said that Nintendo is always looking for how and when a certain title can be released. So I think Nintendo, you know, once it has emailed back and forth with a toy for like seven or eight hazy months, I think Nintendo is still very cognizant about when and how it chooses to re-release Earthbound. It wants as many people as possible to play it and it also wants to maximize the number of new subscribers it could potentially bring to its online service. Nintendo wants the game to succeed, even if it sometimes feels like they forgot about it. I kind of wonder if this release window for Earthbound was meant to both pick up some stragglers who weren't fully enticed by the release of the N64 add-on, and maybe also give Earthbound a relatively quiet time to release before some other big titles this year, as well as what is likely to be a crazy holiday season with Breath of the Wild sequel on the horizon. I'm sure Nintendo saw a surge in new subscribers and upgraded plans when they released the N64 add-on, and maybe they always planned to wait this long on Earthbound to eke out just a little more juice from the people like me who don't always bite for this stuff. See, I still have my N64, and my NSO plan is actually paid for by my awesome friend Josh, but let's just say there's a fucking terrible world where my best boy Josh doesn't exist. I think in that world, the N64 add-on doesn't actually convert me into a paying customer, but the release of Earthbound does. So really, trust me. I think Nintendo sucks a lot of the time, but I also think, looking at when Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings were respectively released at different points in time, I think Nintendo just knows Earthbound is a weird little property that you both can and can't throw out at any time. Like, yes, Nintendo could put Earthbound on the NSO any day of the week, like a fucking Wednesday, and it would cause a splash. They still probably try to optimize that shit in whatever way makes most sense for the company. I mean, Earthbound isn't like a huge swimming pool of honey that's gonna attract every bee from miles. But it's like a pretty good-sized bowl of honey that's gonna get a few bees. Ah, fuck that metaphor. I don't know what I'm saying. Usually I'm drunk by the time I'm done brushing my teeth, so you can't take me too seriously. But really, you say, this was a long time, right? Like, to release Earthbound? Like, what the hell is up with that? And to that, I concur. It was a long time. And I also say, what the hell? But I also say... Here's the hell. Many mother fans and mother enthusiasts are always wondering what's the future of the series. Like when's it gonna begin? When are we gonna see that remake or that compilation release? But there is no future to the mother series. You're living the future of the Mother series. And the future of the Mother series is that there will be no new games. And the current games will probably be released about once a decade for whatever the current Nintendo system is. These games will probably take longer than Mario and Zelda and even F-Zero, but they'll come out before too long. And in 2029, when the Nintendo Switch U is out, we'll be wondering once again what the hell is taking Earthbound so long while Jelly Boy fans rejoice. Part 3. Come on, Reggie. Give us Mother 3. Well, now is the time, the big moment. The reason you clicked on this video, probably. So whether you skipped ahead to this part, or you watched up to this point, in which case, thank you so much, it's time to answer the age-old question. Given the recent re-release of Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings, is Nintendo going to localize Mother 3? Let me first just recommend that whether you're new to this series or a curious veteran, this is not a path of rumors you want to try to contend with. The labyrinthian rumor mill of Mother 3 is a sickening hydra that just keeps on sprouting new heads, and I advise you, really, to try not to make sense of the whole thing on your own. It's just not worth the mental bandwidth. I mean, just to lay things out for you, in 2009, Brownie Brown, the studio that developed Mother 3, expressed a willingness to port the game to the Nintendo DSi, and people thought Mother 3 might come out. And then when Earthbound was released, people thought Mother 3 might come out. But the thing everyone forgot about is that before Earthbound was released, everyone thought that that game was impossible to ever come out because of music and licensing and censorship issues. And then everyone thought Mother 3 might come out when Earthbound Beginnings did. And the same thing happened when Mother 3 came out for the Japanese Virtual Console. And the same thing happened when Nintendo infamously referenced Mother 3 in their 2015 E3 Again, when Reggie mentioned the series interview, alongside which was itself just a series and many and again times when Emily Reggie Rogers said it was finished, Mother then your gamer reported yeah. the thing had been again when Emily Rogers said it was finished, then Yorgamer reported the thing had been Okay, that's all the time I've got. Bombarded by uh, other fans. Look, if you're interested in Mother 3's history of maybe, 
Chronicles of Almost, and Chapters of Hope, I highly recommend checking out Clyde Mandolin's post about this very topic. He goes by Tomato, and he's the guy who led the team that created the fan translation. He's also a professional translator with real industry experience, so if you want a historical look at this game's flirting with western shores, you should really start here. But I haven't answered the question yet. Could the release of Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings mean that Mother 3 will finally see Gamer Boys outside of Japan? Well, here's my answer. Here's why you probably clicked on this video. Here it is, folks. No. I mean, probably not. Like, really? Probably not? An optimist in me says to never say never. I don't know, but I don't think so. At least don't hold your breath over it because you'll die by means of self-suffocation. I know this probably isn't the answer you're looking for, and I hope you don't feel clickbaited. Because if you're still watching this video, I hope you'll be willing to hear me out on this. I want to have a productive conversation about Mother 3. I want to talk about a few different perspectives on the localization of this game and the implications therein. And trust me, if there was ever a Mother 3 optimist, it was me. I have unceasingly, unflinchingly, and foolishly hoped for Mother 3 to be localized since I was in the 7th grade. I used to call Nintendo of America on my summer vacations in middle school, hoping I could get through to Reggie. I have always believed in this game's chances even though I believe those chances are less than slim and practically zero. And even to this day, even if the script was heavily censored, even if the script is nothing close to the excellence of the fan translation, I still vie for localization simply because I would be interested to know what the game would look like in an official capacity. But my interests are neither here nor there. If you're sick of my opinions, I'm going to follow up this section with a brief epilogue containing the opinions of four additional Mother community members. All of these people know a bunch about this series, so I want to offer their perspectives as well. Let's talk about Mother 3. For one, Nintendo has taken a total war approach to many fan efforts over the years. Whether it's a fan game made with love and appreciation for a series, or a simple public service like archiving video game music, Nintendo has shown again and again that they will axe anyone stupid enough to stand in the way of their corporate whims. If you cross Nintendo, you fucking die. But Nintendo knows this translation exists. Clyde Mandolin actually offered it to them for free. Nintendo has had every opportunity to strike this effort down down, but they haven't. And I know this might not be what you want to hear, but listen. This is the localization. Mother 3 has been localized since October 2008, and the fact that this webpage still exists, and that you can still download this patch, is a mercy that not many Nintendo fan efforts have ever known. I hope you can believe that my answer is not a cop-out. This is the localization of Mother 3 in the purest form you will ever see it. You should absolutely regard it as professional, because it was made by not just one, but multiple people with professional experience. And if you haven't played it, you should. Even if you're anti-emulation, you should make an exception for this game, because Nintendo themselves seems to have done the same. And even if Nintendo did release it, even then you would not have as authentic of an experience playing the official version as you would with this fan version, which has painstakingly and loyally adapted Shigesato Toy's work. Nintendo hasn't killed this project. I think they're okay with you playing it. Maybe this English version of Mother 3 is actually done. Maybe Nintendo has adapted Mandolin's work and they're sitting on it to release whenever they feel like it's the right time. I would love to be wrong about Mother 3, but I don't think I am. And if I am, I welcome everyone who ever watches this video to make fun of me until the end of time. The craziest way you could make fun of me is actually by hitting the subscribe button. That would be so fun. Even with all that said, why don't I think this game will ever be localized? Let's keep this train going. I don't think Mother 3's dark themes or mad gypsies or mermaid oxygen systems have anything to do with Nintendo's reluctance to localize this game, at least not in a big picture sense. The main thing is that localizing games is very expensive, and there is much more work to be done than simply translating a game and shipping it out. In the case of Mother 3, one example of a localization hurdle is the way that the game displays text in the first place has to be altered. Tomato and his team worked on this aspect of localization alone for months. Little things like this come up all the time when localizing games, and if the original development team didn't consider, or wasn't told to consider, or things like this for future localization efforts, then someone eventually has to do it, and someone needs to be paid to do it, and someone 
something might take a while to do it, which means you have to pay them more. The someone I'm talking about is this asshole from Cruisin' USA. And here's another thing too, which I just learned from Echoes. When Mother 1 and 2 were localized, Mystery Toy was actually very involved. He would approve, or at least be made aware of, all changes to the English script to either ensure that meaning had been preserved, or to sign off on the changes made to a line. This is hard work, and again, it's work that takes time and money, especially when additional parties like assistants are involved, which they were. As Echoes says, Basically, Itoy and his team were very particular about how they wanted the games to be presented overseas. It was something special for its time, even now I would say. This was because they wanted to preserve his unique writing style and qualities. Because Itoy isn't your average Joe video game writer, okay? He's not over here writing the script for Final Fantasy 2. He's writing games like Earthbound, which aren't just funny, but are full of nuance. And in the case of Mother 3, Little changes in dialogue occur all the time among the supporting cast. They all have their own opinions and perspectives and ideas. I've examined this extensively in my recent playthroughs, and you'd be surprised how many little pieces of dialogue can be found if you know when and where to find them. Itoy writes his games and his characters with a lot of care and attention, so he's not just gonna clip it and ship it and send it to America. Of course, that fabled completed version of Mother 3 starts to feel a little less likely the more and more you think about this. There is, of course, also the fact that Tomato and his team were apparently contacted by a developer from Japan who told them that if they went forward with the project it would disincentivize Nintendo from ever doing it themselves. And you know, that would have been like 10 years ago now so Nintendo could have a different perspective on this but that did happen and that's a big nail for Mother 3's potential coffin. And that's not even to mention Itoi's own perspective. Itoi has said again and again that he doesn't want to work in video games anymore. And no, Mother 3's script wouldn't be video game development, but it would be hard work in a hard industry for a guy who's been out of the game business for 15 years, and who's also in his 70s, and who would also be helping to adapt a game with over 1,000 pages of text with so many lines of text it could be its own novel. If, like Echoes posits, Etoy does have to be the guy to get the ball rolling, do you really think he's just gonna get the ball rolling on an Earthbound remake? Do you really think he's just gonna get the ball rolling on localizing Mother 3? He's tired. He has his own company. From Etoy's perspective, I think he always is happy to see the games available once again, but I don't think he's exactly sitting around and planning an Earthbound remake. Itoi loves Mother. Iwata loved Mother. Miyamoto believed in Mother. And I actually always believed Reggie when he said he appreciated the series and its fans as well. I actually have this theory that Reggie tweeted the phrase Mother 3 English version because if you Google Mother 3 English version, the literal first result is the fan translation. But it doesn't matter how much anyone loves this game. Unless Nintendo actually uses Tomato's work, Localizing this game would be a lot of time and money for something not likely to turn a huge profit. And look, I actually think at this point, with how much of a meme Mother 3's localization has become, I do think the game could technically turn a profit. Just put a $30 price tag on that shit and throw in a hip Smash Bros commercial, and I bet on paper you could turn a buck. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting into the point of conjecture here, but again, are you starting to see my point? Localizing Mother 3 isn't like localizing Shadow Dragon. In fact, the difference between translating these games is the difference between translating Dr. Seuss and War and Peace. There are like a hundred thousand lines of dialogue in this game. That is longer than some novels. Which isn't to mention there's probably some visual censorship that would occur, and Mother 3's actual ROM is apparently a bit of a mess. I'm not gonna get into the details because I don't understand them because I'm stupid, but even the original release is pretty buggy, and apparently the whole thing is compiled somewhat nightmarishly. Tomato and his team put up with this ROM's many quirks and cracks because they love the game and translated it out of a passion for the series. Nintendo may not be so forgiving. Nintendo knows people want this game. I'm sure they've even run the numbers on whether or not it would be a good idea. One of the rumors that sounds the most plausible to me is that at one point it did start, but stopped early in. Because that shit happens in the corporate world. You don't become the most successful company in Japan by falling prey to the sunk cost fallacy. It unfortunately makes all too much sense to me that this project was started and was also abandoned. At this point, biting off more than you can chew is an integral piece of Mother 3's storied history. So maybe Nintendo did take that bite. And maybe they got a mouthful of Mother 3's technical problems, and enormous script, and decided it wasn't worth it. And maybe the whole thing is shelved again. Not necessarily forever, okay? To the optimist out there, but probably. Like I said, I'm always going to support the possibility. I'm always going to welcome it if it ever does happen. So if you're watching this, Reggie, give us Mother 3, if you ever feel like it. Okay, so does that mean Mother is over? Should we never expect even a remaster? A remake? 
What about Mother 4? What if Nintendo looks at the NSO data and sees that millions of people are using their online service specifically to play Earthbound? Couldn't that mean the series has a future? What is the future of the Mother series? Well, I'm gonna be real with you here. Like we talked about earlier, I don't exactly think Shigesatsu a toy is gonna get the ball rolling on any of these projects. Of course, these things could be done without him. Like, the scripts for the games wouldn't change and like, he could just sign off on them and let them go. But again, that's speculation that I don't want to get into. However, it could be worth noting that Itoi's protege himself could maybe helm a project like this. Like I mentioned earlier, Yasuhiro Nagata is the director of the Hobonichi Mother Project. I'm sure Itoi has a lot of trust for him, so maybe it won't have to be Itoi who gets the ball rolling, but Mr. Nagata instead. I could easily tell you that Nintendo could announce an Earthbound remake at any moment, in the same way I could tell you they could announce, say, a Fire Emblem Genealogy remake. If you want to confirmation bias yourself into the likelihood of a remake for a classic Nintendo game, there is almost always a tantalizing trail of breadcrumbs to follow that will support your hypothesis. Anniversaries, similar modern games, cryptic tweets. I could definitely see something fun being done with Mother in line with the remakes Square has been producing of some of their classic games. And I could also see it happening in the style of a Link's Awakening remake, with an awesome visual overhaul that fans would adore. But when I look at what we've gotten from the Mother series over these past few decades, I have to say, like I said in section 2, that this is it my friends. If you want to know what the future of the Mother series is, look around you. This is the future of Mother. And don't get me wrong, if there was ever a time in the past two decades of my life that I thought a release of Mother 3 was possible, or that a remake could happen, it would probably technically be now. The Hobonichi Mother Project is the coolest thing to happen to the series in years, and the first two games being put on the NSO is an amazing thing. The Mother series has never, at least in my time as a fan, seemed so alive, so celebrated. It feels like a toy and his beautiful stories are running a victory lap, and who knows? Maybe this runner has some more miles left in her. Maybe I'm wrong. But if I were to leave you with a thought on this, I'd say something sentimental and a little bit cheesy, in true Mother fashion. See, Itoi said he never wanted to make Mother 4, but he'd love to play it. Looking back at the Mother series, I feel like I had a reason for making Mother 1 through 3. But now, my kid is all grown up. The feeling of, I want a Mother 4 to be released, is inside me too. Even if it's not something I need to do, I still feel that way. Still, there isn't someone for me to watch over from afar anymore. If there were a fourth game, I'd want to be the player. He also said Mother 4 is this, our lives, growing up and getting older and hanging on to our childhoods. The very lives you're living now are Mother 4. I really feel that way. Today we had lots of ridiculous thoughts. Today we felt sadness. Today we laughed a lot. That's what I had set out to do within the world of those games. There will never be so many Mother games that new fans have trouble distinguishing one from the other. There won't be a Mother universe that gets merchandised into oblivion. I guess that's a matter of perspective. The games, it seems, will always be there, even if you have to wait a while for them. And I don't care what anyone says. I always believe that no media property, smaller or bigger, has touched a group of artists, writers, web designers, entrepreneurs, and people in quite the same way that Mother has. And let me just hit you with one more thing. Especially for those people who really, 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 really want Mother 3, and won't be happy until all the Mother games have been remade. It's not necessarily Earthbound that you want more of. You might just be wanting more video games that are willing to think outside the box. And luckily for you, this happens all the time in gaming nowadays. There are a lot of great games right now doing truly inventive things. We also live in a time of unique localization, whether or not that includes Mother 3 at all. A lot of series have been revived and made available for the first time in just the last few years, and there are some great games in there. Some people call Earthbound the proto-indie game, and I suppose that may be true for some projects more than others, and Earthbound was certainly one of the first big games to really think outside the box so blatantly, but don't worry about how much, or if at all, a game is Earthbound inspired. Focus on the fact that because of indie games finding more funding than ever, more games are simply inspired, not Earthbound inspired. More games are coming from a unique creative vision instead of a lineage of a certain type of formula. Just like Itoi pitching his weird little game to Nintendo back in the day, Nowadays all kinds of developers are pitching all kinds of weird ideas, and some of them are more genre-bending than Earthbound ever was. We live in a time of games with visions, games with messages, games with fun, inventive, witty writing, games that are begging for your attention, because that's the thing about a game being original. 
there doesn't need to be 15 of it for you to get the point. And that's why my final message to any mother fan, new and old, is to remember that the feeling mother gives you is unique because the game originated from a unique mind, from somewhere deep inside a creative individual who intimately connected with every iteration of his trilogy, who created the series because he felt compelled to, who created the series because, like any masterpiece, he had to. Look at some of the most influential pieces of media or works of art, and you'll find that the impulses of great creators are often untamable. They just happen because they need to do it. And when they're done, they're done. It's not only mother that you love. It's creativity, and the boldness to be different, and the intent behind making a game because someone wanted to make it, not because it was time for the next season of content. So if you love Mother, and you want more, then play widely, watch widely, read widely, make something of your own, and share it with the world. Or just get high and play Halo or something. I don't know. That's probably what I'm going to do later. What else is there to say? My fucking throat hurt. Yeah, so this is part four, the epilogue. And I'm not going to say much here. In fact, now is the chance for other people to talk. Like I said, the discourse around Mother 3 can get pretty wild. And because I wanted to have a productive conversation, I don't think it's fair for you to only have my perspective. Please enjoy the additional perspectives of these four incredibly knowledgeable people who have all contributed to mother discourse and the mother community in a variety of ways. First up is Cody, the lead translator for Source Gaming and the director of Mother Forever. I don't think a normal localization will happen at this point. Not because of the content, but because Nintendo's overseas offices can't invest resources into something that's way more difficult to achieve now than it was during the GBA era. It's not that the resources aren't out there online now, but Nintendo would most likely want to create their own tools to modify the game if they did it now. Who knows if most of their older tools would work correctly now after more than a decade. It's not like they can really get Brownie Brown to help either since the studio split into two and neither part probably has an easy way to modify it. The fact that this is an overseas issue means it's also in the hands of the overseas offices to justify it if they really want to get it done. And I don't think they really have as much power to do this as a lot of people seem to think they do. They wouldn't really be able to give a reason for investing so many resources and getting so many people involved besides fan outcry. I think the first re-release of Earthbound was honestly just because Satoru Iwata recognized the fans, and putting it on the Wii U didn't really require much effort to do. Same for Earthbound Beginnings, since the game was effectively done already and the Earthbound re-release was successful. All that's to say, I don't think Mother 3 will get a standard, official localization unless some very high up power at Nintendo puts it in motion. Not Nintendo of America or Europe, it would probably need to come from Nintendo's HQ in Japan. What I do think is possible now and into the future is a remake of all three games into some kind of Mother 1 plus 2 plus 3. It's really the only way I can see Mother 3 being officially released in any form overseas. This is something difficult, but not even necessary for Nintendo to do if a successful indie developer presented them with the idea and already has gotten permission from Shigesatu Itoi since he holds the rights to the series. After seeing the Advance Wars remake being helmed by indies, I honestly think this is how we'll see Mother 3 released someday. At least, if nobody else does it, I'd like to try getting to that point and doing it someday. Next up is Echoes, who we've already been introduced to. Echoes, along with Cody, was a founder of Mother Forever. I do think it'll eventually happen. I've always thought one of the major hurdles has been the lack of GBA re-releases. When Mother 3 first came out, the DS had already been out for two years, leaving the GBA in the dust. In fact, they really pushed the fact that you could play Mother 3 on the DS in Japanese advertising. So it makes sense why Nintendo of America didn't pull the trigger on localizing it so soon. The micro bombed, and it wouldn't have made sense for them to invest in such a heavy project. The next time we would see GBA games again was on the Wii U pretty late in the lifespan. It was rumored they seriously considered releasing Mother 3 at this time, and I've heard this from very good sources of my own, too. Of course, it never ended up coming to fruition. No specific reason has ever been provided on why this may have been shelved. Perhaps it was, once again, the lack of a market to return their large investment on the localization budget, or maybe even the many technical issues the Japanese Wii U release was plagued with underneath the surface. Of course, many will assume it was the political climate at the time in 2016, and some content in the game might have come across as offensive, but at the end of the day, it's unclear. Since that short-lived 
Wii U service, we haven't seen any official way to play GBA titles. That probably has to come first, and since Nintendo of Europe Research and Development has developed built-in Lua scripts to patch and translate their games in real time, as seen with Mario 64 Shindao Edition and Fire Emblem, the work that would need to be done to localize Mother 3 becomes a lot easier and cheaper, so the investment is less of an issue. And since the previous two games had their fair share of censorship, I'm sure they'd change whatever is needed with Mother 3, too. I've never thought it was held back due to them being unable to figure out how to censor things mindfully. I think it's always been the investment and lack of a good time to release it with the absence of legacy GBA titles. Katie is an artist, an active member in the Mother community, who often contributes to the finding and preservation of Earthbound 64 materials. Guess my general stance is, while I do think a localization is still a possibility, I'm not really holding my breath for it either way. I get the impression Nintendo of America doesn't, and has never, really considered it a big priority of theirs, despite the overwhelming demand for it. I think this is for a multitude of reasons, but mostly because they most likely don't consider it a profitable undertaking for all the work that would have to go into it. Even though there is a market, I'm assuming it's one they consider niche. That, combined with the game's sales being underwhelming in Japan, has probably just made them uninterested at this point. But I could still see a localization happening at some point. Maybe on a less busy year, or when Nintendo is really desperate for some good PR. And last, but not least, is Jonathan, another Earthbound 64 enthusiast and archivist who runs the Earthbound 64 Discord server. Alrighty, here's my thoughts. When it comes to the content of Mother 3, most people seem to project pretty quickly that they've located the controversy within the game that's held back the official localization for so many years. But I think it's simultaneously both a more simple yet more complex reason why it's not happened. From my understanding, Mother 1 and 2 both had a very hands-on localization with the team of both games overseeing development of the translations to make sure they were high quality, just like how the games were in their original language. Mother 3 suffered such bad development hell, not just counting the N64 version's development, but also the fact we know the GBA version got delayed and whatnot, and it was being released really late into the the GBA's lifespan, so the team seemingly found it not worth the effort to go ahead with localization, with Nintendo of America not caring either way. Maybe the content of the game did play some sort of role as to why it never saw the coveted localization, but at this point we can speculate on that point until the cows come home, but we still have no concrete evidence as to what exactly regarding the content that it could have been. As for if I think a localization will happen ever, I honestly don't know. Anything is possible with Nintendo now. They're aware of the fan demand, and so is Itoi and Hobo. Bonichi, but whether or not it'll happen is something I still can't be sure on. There's a lot of small evidence that I could point towards that supports both perspectives for a localization eventually happening or never happening, but it does feel kind of moot because like I said, anything could happen. Nintendo is unpredictable a lot of the time, and as I've said on a few different occasions, stranger things have happened. If I personally had to do something to get an official English Mother 3 out there, I'd ask for this. Make Mother Collection on Switch in Japan. All three games have English language options, including Mother Mother 3. Mother 3's English translation on here would be brand new and would be a one-to-one -one localization, no compromises. Release it in Japan only and have people import it since the Switch is region free. And boom, you've got your official English Mother 3 without having to actually release it worldwide. And that's everyone. Like I said, I just wanted you guys to have some additional perspectives on Mother 3, because there are so many great areas around this game, its preservation and its localization. So I don't have much else to say here. Let's wrap this puppy up. Thank you so much to Echoes, Cody, Jonathan, and Katie for their help with making this video. Thank you again to Echoes for always being there to educate me about the Mother series. And thank you for watching it. I think that's it. This is over. <laughs> okay, goodbye.